with the chair of urban design and with plenty of colleagues from our faculty, especially with uh, Professor Inkenballer and others. Uh, we are cooperating with um, uh, Aleppo and with the University of Aleppo and with several other universities in the Middle East, in Damascus, in Cairo, since now nearly, or since more than 10 years now. So, um, and this is what I'm doing. I never worked as a planner for Syria, so I was always working on this level of university cooperation. And with this good relation to our colleagues uh, and good colleagues in Aleppo, we started to discuss um, about two years ago, what, we, what can we do for Aleppo and for the development and what is going on at the moment. And when we started with the debate, of course, there was the topic of uh, reconstruction, rehabilitation of the old city after the war. Uh, but we also remembered debates we had years before with a conference about urban development of Baghdad and which we, where we also had guests from Beirut and especially the colleagues from Beirut uh, told us, this was uh, 2010, that in the time after the civil war in Beirut, the academy, so the American University of Beirut, had no impact what happened in downtown. Even, I would say, the American University of Beirut. It's not a, a weak institution. It's quite good uh, networking to all other parts in the city. But they mentioned they had no impact to what happened after the Civil War with the rehabilitation, or we must, must say, with the total transformation of downtown Beirut. And they said, the only thing what we could do at that time was documenting. And so when we started to discuss what can we do for Aleppo, we came to the point that it is very important that we document all information we have, all documents that are safe, secured, and analyzed for the future. And so from this is this initiative coming, Aleppo Archive in Exile. So, and with this debate, we also thought, okay, with this, this can be our part to offer a basis, or maybe also initials, for the rehabilitation of the old town of Aleppo after the war. And what I'm um, presenting now is a project we are doing at the uh, Chair Urban Design together with the uh, Chair Urban History and uh, with the informatic and IT um, professions from our university. Um, and in the cooperation with the German Archaeological Institute in Berlin. Um, and it is at the moment in the stage of uh, finalizing a research proposal and uh, also a proposal to implement this Aleppo archive in exile. Why it is so important to save all documents or to work about Aleppo with its urban structures which are looking back to nearly 5,000 years. We heard a lot about this by Professor Inkenballer and also Professor Nagler and uh, here maybe just from my perspective it is important um, to look very in depth to the structures. We know from um, all this assessment and analysis, which were the basis to um, um, give Aleppo the status as a world heritage town, that it's about these different urban structures which coming from different uh, generations of the urban development from ancient times until today. 
Um, uh, and all these different historic layers are overlapping. And Inken Bala mentions this. Today, we, or when the war started, we just saw parts of these really old structures and the city like it was 2011. Um, but when we will think about the further development, for us it's important to say, okay, which of these structures which were there 2011 have for the heritage the most important value? And this also means which of the structures are maybe going back not only to one generation, maybe going back for many decades and centuries of urban development that we are able to uh, discuss priorities, which parts have a specific value or the most important value um, to um, talk about priorities and what are the most important things uh, after or for the rehabilitation after the war. <clears throat> Professor Nagler mentioned all this experience of 30 years of rehabilitation. Of course, this is also very important to uh, save all the data we have about this. And this is also one reason why we started with this project, Aleppo Archive in Exile, Today, we still have the network to the colleagues who worked for Aleppo, in Aleppo, about Aleppo during these 30 years. And we can say, still they are all alive. So we must collect the data today. Maybe in 10 or 15 years, the network is cut and we will lose some of the documents because there's only a part of these documents uh, saved in a systematic way. Most of the files and data is still somewhere in some private uh, uh, desk or wherever. Uh, um, and this is uh, what we would like to do, to collect this and uh, to bring it together to this archive. Uh, we spoke about that, this 30 years of urban rehabilitation, and even that during this time, I have 800. Professor Nagler had 900. Yes, but it's different, but it doesn't matter. So there were less than 800 finalized, but they were further on the agenda, which should be renovated, but it never took place. What I would just like to mention, those buildings where this uh, renovation took place, there are documents existing about the buildings. And we must bring these documents together because they are also a part of the, uh, let's say, the archive or the memory about uh, this the ta old town of Aleppo. Of course, there are also all these other projects for the rehabilitation of Aleppo, which should be available uh, uh, for the future. <clears throat> so I mentioned a few of these goals already. The, the first step, or one of the first goals is collecting and saving the documents. We started with this. Um, the, another goal is identifying the most important characteristics of the world heritage of Alep. Of course, this is already done with the world heritage sta uh, status by UNESCO, but we have to reflect this and with working with the documents to go more in depth to say, okay, this criteria and this characteristic is not only important for the time before the war, this we will f we find f hundreds of years in the past. So uh, that we work with all the data um, and um, working with the data, one goal is here also to create 
a consistent picture of the whole uh, old town of Aleppo. We, we saw wonderful plans today, but until today we don't have a plan of the whole city of Aleppo with all these uh, ground figure drawings inside. And parts of this plan are hand drawing plans from the past, maybe only in books like uh, dissertations published in German, others are otherwhere, other were done in the time of rehabilitation. Um, so, uh, but we counted that for uh, more than 1,000 buildings, there are existing drawn ground figures. So, basic main inventories of the building structure before the war. And this should be brought together. And on this basis, we should reflect this, what are the most important characteristics of the town to go uh, on with this. So this means analyzing and editing the documents. And of course, for this, we need criteria. What is more important? So we can imagine if we have an old PhD work, 500 pages, so what is important from this to put it in more details into the archive or not? And the criteria is coming from the debate, what is most important for the future? These are the questions, these are the criteria which should guide us in this research work to analyze and to edit all these different document and in this process we will specify priorities for the rehabilitation or this is our goal to do so. Um, another goal is of course the opening of the archive for the public. This is very important that this can be done as soon as possible and at the end of course the archive should be transferred to Syria again. This is, uh, uh, but here we must mention that the whole work on this archive is a digital work. We put no documents or we, carry, we are not carrying any documents outside Syria. Um, so uh, we are just dealing with um, printed or digital documents. Okay, uh, just in brief overview, what are the available docu documents? There was already an urban archive established in Aleppo, uh, funded and supervised by uh, the German uh, GIZ, so the, this Agency for International Development. Uh, they started with this work 2008, but they had to stop 2011 and when they left the country they put uh, the data with them and these are uh, 3600 files and uh, uh, we have these files and they are now saved in the um, uh, archive of the uh, German Archaeological Institute and at our university but they are not prepared to be available for everyone. It's just a, a collection. We had a first initial conference 2014 with many of the partners who worked for Aleppo and there we collected who has which data, which documents and we could count that there are uh, about 6,500 further files and documents available which should be the basis of this Aleppo archive. Um, of course, this collection is an ongoing process and uh, um, with every conference, with every meeting, we uh, find further uh, uh, resources uh, which will be, um, uh, if possible, integrated into this archive. I spoke about already about this that we uh, uh, have for more than 1,000 of this uh, 16,000 parcels or plots, um, detailed building documentation, 
uh, and that with this and the further plant uh, um, a spatial picture of the whole city of, of the whole old town of Aleppo will be created and this archive will work on the basis of a GIS so uh, a system um, where different which is linked to the locations, to the topography, so not to the documents. The main basis is the topography with the uh, cadastral map, um, which is available, or which we have about Aleppo. And on the basis of this cadastral map, all information will be collected on different uh, layers, so that um, with the different locations, streets, addresses, monuments, uh, you can, in future, hopefully, find all available information which you are looking for, for a specific building, for a sp specific street, for a specific place. And here another idea why we are convinced that it's so important to have this archive. We know from other examples like Beirut or other cities after the war that maybe urban planners do not have a real strong or even a smaller impact to the further development. And if then there is, we saw the pictures, how destroyed is Aleppo, that it is easy to say for an investor or for a politician, oh, everything is destroyed, I have a proposal, I will build you a wonderful new hotel and it will look like wonderful like the past. But we know under these ruined buildings, there are the walls, maybe of the ground floors, there are the structures of the basement, and we hear this from Aleppo, under these old buildings there are the other layers of the ancient history, or the, the further history. And if such an archive is publicly available, people from the local uh, community, from Aleppo, other experts, journalists, whoever, can have a look and say, no, you are not right. It looks like destroyed, but under this we have all information what is there. The information is available. And maybe with this kind of documentation we can have a small impact to what will go on uh, after the war. Um, so this, this is more or less not readable because it's too small. It is just the, um, uh, it shows the structure of this um, urban archive about Aleppo which was created in Aleppo until 2011. So they started with this idea of this archive already uh, 2005 or 6 and then they elaborated this but nobody knows how it's going on. This was then the decision when we said, okay, we will try to continue with this work um, and um, uh, started with these first initial workshops and now with all these further activities and cooperation to do so. Um, and just one example from this Urban Historical Documentation Center there are these ground figures, even from small, not uh, rich buildings available, and they are inside these documents. So, uh, and this should be available not only for us, for all. Um, the guiding questions for analyzing this um, data collection um, uh, are and I mentioned part of them already, which are the main spatial and architectural and socio-economic structures for the determination of the world heritage of Aleppo. So I spoke about that, it's not only the structures of the situation 2011, also about to analyze what were the relevant structures for this uh, in uh, the past before. And the question Professor Nagler also raised, in which way the experience with the urban rehabilitation process of Aleppo and the conducted strategies can help for the rehabilitation, not only of Aleppo, also 
other historic cities in the Middle East. And the principles, which principles and priorities should be the basis for the rehabilitation, because we can, it is uh, very obvious that the reconstruction after the war will be a fast process. And partly, of course, it starts already during the war. The people, there are still some people living. Some people start repairing their buildings, maybe. Last week I spoke with a, a student from Homs and she told me, no, the, I know, I know. But now in Homs, directly after the, the, the shooting ended, the families went back to save their buildings, to save their property, because this is the most important thing they have, their houses, and to have also space to live. And the, things like this will happen here. So there is not the time to start planning, planning, and then start doing something. The process will start immediately. At the same time, there will be maybe from the politician level or from investor level, uh, a high pressure that uh, things may change or that new investments uh, took place. And for this, it is useful that we discuss before and uh, recommend principles and um, uh, priorities to say, okay, if there are compromises needed, but these are the priorities, these are the most important things which we maybe can save. Um, in this um, debate, we would like to uh, discuss scenarios uh, for the development after the war uh, to discuss at, uh, in uh, relation to this also recommendations for the rehabilitation. And here we have an overview uh, about this project. Um, we are nearly everything. You see, this is what we are doing, data collection with the data from Aleppo, from different universities, from private offices and private persons. Then to save the data, this is now done uh, in cooperation with the German Archaeological Institute, analyzing, editing the data, preparing it for uh, the GIS system and publishing or making it public available, the data. Um, and at the same time, doing this, doing research to define the criteria for the analyzing and the editing, to define priorities, and to do so to uh, discuss scenarios. So this is more or less the ongoing brainstorming and research work feeding this archive and organizing this archive and, this, and, at, uh, and um, working on recommendations for the rehabilitation. At the same time there are edited um, activities like workshops we would like to do together with the University of Stuttgart and Bari, also Bari University in Italy. They work many years for Aleppo. They also have uh, good um, sources in their on their laptops, in their computers, but not public available. Uh, and uh, we will have, uh, we hope, several PhD working together with this work about specific topics for this. Um, and there is, in the cooperation with the other institutions, not only the German Archaeological Institute, there are many initiatives in Germany working about Aleppo, to coordinate that, for example, that the documentation of damages can be integrated to this archive to see both layers on the same time. Of course, this is a, a challenge to reach this, but it's a, a part of the uh, project. Um, there is already a, a digital tool 
to publish this, yes. Um, more than half an hour already? Half an hour. Ah, no, no. no. <laughs> the others were longer, but not me. Uh, uh, it's the last slide. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. Um, our university, together with the um, uh, German Archaeological uh, Institute, they elaborated uh, uh, open source, uh, open infra uh, model, which is nearly uh, finished to uh, be used. And this uh, we will use um, as the, let's say, the technical basis of this uh, archive. And it, it is working together with uh, the technical uh, structures we have at our university and the technical structures we have at the uh, German Archaeological Institute. But uh, please don't ask questions about this to me. So uh, <laughs> I'm not the, the IT technical. Uh, but there are tools today available uh, to use this and to work uh, in an ongoing way in such archives. And these are just the cooperation partners uh, we have uh, for this project. I mentioned some of them uh, during uh, this presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>